My name is Boyd Varty. I think of myself as an artist of experience. My passion is to create transformational experiences for myself and others as a way to explore what it means to truly live. My central exploration is to live on what I would call the track of your life. To me, this is to live courageously towards the discovery of what you are called to and to what life asks of you. So much of how I live has been informed by my passion as an animal tracker. I'm following the trail of my own life and reporting back. This show is a daily broadcast from a treehouse on the Londolozi Game Reserve in the wild eastern part of South Africa. Londolozi is a 14,000 hectare wilderness reserve adjacent to the Kruger National Park. The land is home to lion, leopard, rhino, elephant and buffalo, as well as a variety of other animals. I'm your host, Boyd Varty. My goal is to spend 40 days and 40 nights alone in the wilderness to explore the archetype of the mystic in nature and hone my skills as a tracker. These are my daily stories. Day 38. Push. Journal entry. If you think six weeks is long, you should try two days. Time continues to play games with me. I don't know where the last few weeks went, but the two days ahead of me may as well be two years. One of those so close and yet so far type things. The moon rises in the evening have been really outrageously beautiful here. A giant orange orb rises up from the far eastern horizon, creating a mind-bending cosmic confrontation with the fact that we are on a rock floating in infinity. Last night as it rose, a small pearl-spotted owl perched on the branch of a marula tree so that for a bit the tiny owl was silhouetted against the moon. Maybe I will write a children's book for young mystics called The Owl and the Moon. They say you can measure the effects of the moon in as little as a teacup of water. Well, this moon was so big, I felt like it would cause a tsunami in your English breakfast. An astounding truth that the moon controls the tides and fertility falls onto its calendar. It's comforting in some ways to know that you, large sack of water that you are, cannot escape the moon's pull on you, no matter how complex and technologically advanced your life becomes. It doesn't really ever matter how many people report to you, the moon is still pulling your strings. The night was so bright, I didn't even need a torch. You know you're hungry when everything starts to look like food. I am so many meals behind that for a while the moon looked like a huge pancake, a wheel of golden French cheese, a ripe peach. This game, <laughs> this game went on in my head all night. I'm guessing this is a pretty natural place to be. If I'm honest, I feel a little worn by the elements. It's not that I'm tired, more just how you would feel towards the end of a big experience something that has taken a lot of focus. Even just trying not to get bitten, eaten, gored, ironed, mauled, it plays on your mind. It's a headspace. I really want to shower. I really want to talk to my friends. In fact, in my fantasies, I'd like to meet my friends at a great bar in Cape Town on a perfect summer's day and drink pints with them at the taps. Order a lot of food. See, I'm back on that. Let them act like real knuckle draggers and expect to get cut mercilessly for every lisp, mispronunciation and underdeveloped thought I had on this podcast for at least an hour before they turned on each other. I'm excited to see my dog and have her cuddle on the couch. It's things like that that play on your mind with a kind of warm anticipation an anticipation that you only really allow yourself closer to the end. You can't entertain ideas like that early on, otherwise it'll just derail the whole process of presence. Equally, I'm reminded of something about Renius that I truly admire. While Renius is the pinnacle of this, really any tracker worth his salt is wired this way. It has to do with a relentless resilience. 
A little while ago, when Renius, my friend Alex and I were running a tracking retreat, we found tracks of a pride of lions. It was early morning, and the night before we had slept out in the bush, on the ground, under the stars, each guest keeping watch around a small fire. The night under the, under the stars had been a high point on a few days of re retreat that had been like a highlight reel of tracking. We had followed and found rhino, elephant, lions, a leopard with a kill. We had seen a wild dog pack kill an inyala. We had meditated on hillsides and listened for lions to roar at dawn. I tell you this to say that the retreat crew was well baked. They had had an outrageously phenomenal time. The tracks that morning had been tricky, not as fresh as we initially thought. By ten in the morning, Alex shot me a glance and then looked at our guests. After a night of watch and all the days of excitement, they were waning. They needed a shower and breakfast and a rest. Part of the art of guiding is to be able to read where people are and to know when it's time to push and when it's time to let something go. It was time to call it. Alex turned to the guests and told them we were going to call the tracking to a close and go get some rest and some food. At the sound of that, the guests decidedly perked up. It was definitely the right call. The type of call that's easy to make on the back of so many epic days. Renius wouldn't leave the tracks. Well, more like it was he couldn't leave the tracks. It offended something in his nature as a tracker not to know where those lines had gone. I'm not talking about a new recruit here. Renius is a 40-year veteran of safaris and tracking expeditions. How easy would it be after 40 years to say, yeah, happy guests, get them next time, home for an eggs benedict and a nap. He couldn't do it. He had to know. And I was moved by it. It was to me a mark of mastery. This art form for him was so far beyond a job. Later that afternoon, Renius arrived back in the camp as we were preparing to go out again. He was jovial and energized. He had found the lions. Part of being a tracker is a relentless attitude to close the trail with success. My mind flashed to a tracker by the name of Porky Bernardi, who tracked a single male lion that escaped from the Karoo National Park for over 50 kilometers through mountainous terrain alone when the helicopter crews couldn't find the animal. He wouldn't stop. He found it. For years, I would write to my friend Andrew about something I was trying to do that wasn't coming together. My texts would generally be a long, whiny ramble. I would get a single word back. All it would say is push. It was so simple. And each time I got that text, I knew I could. A few days ago, I left the trail of a lion when the sun climbed high in the sky and the light grew flat and white. Back at the camp, the presence of the open end to that track played on my mind relentlessly. I needed to go back, and I did, to be certain the trail was lost over the border, which it was. There are two equally important moments in life. Both require courage. The one is knowing when to hold on. The other is knowing when to let go. It's not time for me to let go yet. I need to bring my mind back here. I need to love the hunger. I need to relish the cold and the heat and this wind that's blowing. All the days alone. I need to be here. All the way to the end. Don't leave before it's over. It's a choice. Push. Four zero. Out. This has been another episode of the Track Your Life podcast with Boyd Varty. Follow us on Instagram at Boyd underscore Varty, Twitter at Boyd Varty, visit Boyd's website at boydvarty.com or subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast player. Please rate and review this podcast so that more people can find and enjoy it.